Welcome to Lionheart and welcome to the Lion Bay Yacht Charters. This is one of our very best boats in the fleet. I really hope you enjoy sailing as much as we have. Go over starting the engine. The engine must be running before you work the anchor windlass. So to start the engine, with it being parallel to the water like that, that is actually a neutral position, and you can tell that because I can push the button in. Now we'll want a little bit of throttle to start with, so press that button in and drop that down. Now we have some throttle, and over here you switch the power button on, and when you do that, these will light up. So you press that and where they light, and then you hit the start, and there they are. A bit more throttle, and as I said, up to 1500 for the windlass. Now, to work the bow thrusters while we're up here, this is quite an interesting thing because they've got a bow thruster that actually retracts completely. So you have to give it time. So you can see these two are, 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 are flashing to say that um, there is power here, yeah? and this can only happen when the engine is running. Then you depress this button, and you hold it, and you get that beeping, and you can hear it beep. Now it will beep for quite some time, and this is the actual thruster coming down out of the bow of the boat. As I said, it retracts. So this will flash away, like that, and then when it's stopped and both of these lights are stationary, you can then operate the bow thruster to port and to starboard. Now remember that you have to pause at least two seconds between going from one side to the other, so that is important. Right, we have the engine running, just at 1500 RPM, and the bow thruster is engaged. So why don't we go and up to the foredeck and let's have a look at the anchor. Remembering a foot first of all that the switch down below is on for the anchor control. So I'm going to quickly pop down to the panel which we've already had a look at. I'm going to switch on the anchor control. And to use the anchor, you just take the pin out of the head. You can see it goes right the way through. It's just quick, simply a case of twisting it and pulling it clear. And then you open up in here and Tucked away to one side is the remote control. So you just lean in here, take it out of its bracket, and you've got an up and a down button, and also a chain counter. So a very useful little unit, and it's up and down, away you go. So I'll just hang it back where it belongs. And then when you finish, you just dog the hat down by just rotating those like that, and it's now down. Right, now you'll notice that this is beeping. This is to tell us that the bar thruster is in fact in the fully extended position. So we don't want a motor or sail with it like that. So to switch it off, we just press that button and hold it down. And it will beep for about 20 times and that whole unit is now being retracted. Wait until that's finished. And there it is. And all you have to do is get a soft pulsing light just to indicate that there is power up there. Now down here, to switch off, bring it back to the horizontal position. You'll see the button pops out. That's it. And now that's horizontal position. And when you come to switch this off, do not hit the power button. You hit here where it says stop. And you hit and hold that down for at least three seconds, and then you can let go 
and then this will go blank. Now if it stays on like that, it meant that you haven't held the, um, the stop button down or the power button down for any length of time. So you can press that power now and hold it for five seconds. One, three, four, five, and it's gone off. Change about stuff out here. These two life line closures should be stretched across here to the other side before you go. And uh, this is a very nifty outboard crane. It's made off, the line is here, and it's made off in there by attaching it to the handle. You just undo this hook and you hook it into there, and then you undo the thumb screws, loosen the locks, of course, undo the thumb screws, and then somebody helps you. It's best to have these enclosure covers off, and somebody helps you lift the motor clear and off the outboard bracket. You have the dinghy tethered nicely across here so that you will lower it down to somebody standing in the dinghy and keeping control of this they can lower it nice and gently onto the transom board of the dinghy makes life very easy what we're looking at here is 600 feet of floating line absolutely fantastic for using up in desolation sound you've even got a little handle that retracts it helps you wind it wind it up the retraction of here it's usually best to have a person on each cord like that to pull the thing up and because uh, it is quite heavy and it locks into place so to retract the swim platform it's best to have a person on each uh, each lanyard here and you can pull pull up making sure that you don't trap these lifeline uh, gate gates in, in the actual mechanism so you pull this up and just slide the bolt across and it locks it in place over here you've got a man overboard rescue system which is pretty nifty. It's a harness with a, with, with, um, a hole of the line which you can throw at somebody and they can actually just climb into it and it's very effective. And of course you have a dam boy which you can toss over the side. Before you go sailing, let's have it extended with the flag ready to unfurl. And uh, we do have a life ring and on the other side of the outboard here you'll see the life ring. Now that's got 15 meters of line attached to it as well. I have three point filling points or pump out points. This is your diesel. Okay, so that's diesel only in there. And then up on the starboard side forward near the anchor locker, you'll see another fill point, and that is for the water. Okay, now on this side, amidships, just around the corner here in amidships, you'll have the waste pump out. And that's all that happens there. You can either grab the train straight over the side or you can keep the tank shut and then go to a pump out station. Unfortunately in Canada there are few and far between and have the tank pumped out. A power cord and you can see the light is on indicating that there is power coming into that cord and if we come across here it comes around through the cockpit and actually connects to the boat inside this locker. Yeah, I'm going to open up that locker and show you. Now when I flip this open, you'll see the light is on. But that light will also be on even if the plug has fallen out. So we'll just watch that. All it indicates is there is power coming through to this point. It doesn't tell you whether it's happily going into the boat. So I'm just making sure that it's connected. And it is. Right, we're in the cockpit lockers here at the moment. The stainless boarding ladder drops into the two fittings that you can see on the swim platform and that's your, your um, swim platform and boarding ladder all in one. And of course your dinghy fuel is in here as well. Right, the emergency steering tiller lives in the starboard cockpit locker. This part gets held in there and there's a little tap thread hole with this butterfly nut which holds it in place. But this drops straight on top of the quadrant you have to open up that inspection port and this drops in on top of the quadrant and of course this will slide in here and give you a good steering post as an emergency. The way that's put back together, you'll see there's a hole there and right at the end here we've got another hole and that's what we engage to put it back. So that gets held in there like that.
And then I just re-engage the butterfly nut and then hold it together. Unusual but effective. Inside here we've got a hose. In fact, we've got a couple of hoses. There's a white hose and this is a flexible hose. You've also got a spare shore power cable, which can be very useful, especially if you are a long way from your pedestal. You can join those together. And this is useful for the dinghy. When you go ashore, if you're worried about the dinghy being stolen, you have a key for this on your key ring, and that gives you that security. Okay. This is the bilge pump. You just open it up like that, and the handle is part of the lid, and you just pump away like that, and that's pumping water out of the inside of the boat. So put it out the way, you just rest it down like that, and snap it. Right. Opening the companion ways, it's kind of unconventional. It uses this round brass key, and that fits in only one way. And when you undo that, you need to hold on to this, because as you twist it, it has to have a dropping down suddenly. So you get a jolly good twist. You can see if you can't twist it, it's not yet unlocked. So go over one more. That's it. You can feel that. Now it will drop. And I'm holding it at the same time. It's quite a stiff spring. So I just let it down, holding it gently down like that. To shut it, you just pick it up and snap it into place like that. And it's shut. Now remember, lock, you can feel that lock, you won't be able to turn this. To unlock, just anti-clockwise, and remember, hold it when you twist it, and let it down gradually, and that's it. So to check the engine oil, you go into the galley, open this, and in the top left-hand corner there is a barrel bolt which you undo, and then this swing open, and you have the very best access ever to dipping the oil. And there you can see the the dipstick right there. Okay. This here is an engine kill button and if rotated what it does is it isolates the engine start so that you can't start the engine. Do remember to dog it back before you take off because it will swing about. So you just press it right in and let it shut. Shut that. If you want to see the rest of the engine to check the V-bolts and to see if there's any leaks or anything, you flip this open and you get you get good access right here. If it does need oil, that's where you'd fill it, right there. Now the strainer for the coolant couldn't be easier, it's right here and you can see into the basket and you'll want that to be clear at all times because the water comes up through the bottom of the boat, gets sucked by the pump and then delivered to the rest of the engine. Over there you can see there's the coolant level for the engine and it should be exactly where it is between those two levels. So oil level and water level and that's you for the for your trip. Now the pump itself, the raw water pump should you need to change the impeller, you'll have to undo this panel and that gives you access to the front of the engine and the raw water pump is on the left hand side. Right so we've in the port aft cabin and we take the two panels off it gives you good access you can see where the starter motor wires are and the alternator and then the raw water pump comes from here and it picks itself up through the leg of the sail drive if you look down there you can see the red handle that you'd want to switch off whenever you're changing the impeller so that's your raw water inlet here we are at the dc panel um this is your control here and just by pressing that button it will give you the holding tank for the uh, master for the uh, head and you press again fresh water it only has one tank and it's 100 percent full we press again and we see diesel needs a little top up it's at 69 percent and press once more this is the bow thruster battery at 13.8 volts and the engine battery is at the same voltage and so is the service battery, so they're all taking a charge at the moment. These here, or the explanation for each one of these emblems, will be found over here on the door. So all you have to do is just reference these numbers and the pictures and it will describe exactly what each of those switches is for. And on the right side, it gives you what each one of these buttons represent. 
So please use that, it's an important part of the instruction that shows you how to work the boat. If we look down here, we've got the bilge pump uh, um, power on, so that's on all the time. And over here we have your LPG gas control, that's for the, the lighting of the stove. So you've got to come in here and press that button. And then when the valve is on, then it's uh, ready to use. To press off, you just hit that button and it will switch off. And there's on, so that's valve on, you heard the click, and now you can light the stove. This here is your heater control. You just twist that and the heater will fire up. Please be careful when using that, that you don't tie the dinghy up near the exhaust because it'll burn through the, the painter line. And over here we have our VHF radio, and we'll just take this off and show you how to work. And to operate the VHF, you just press, you switch that on, just twin take it in the normal way. And when that alarm comes up, you hit that button, and that gets rid of it. That's there, it's a warning, and just says the DSC is disabled. Um, to go to the regular channel, it says hit it again, and now you're in your distress channel. 16 if you want a WX all you have to do there is just press the WX and release it The heater all you do is press the power button so it turns on and then press ok And press ok one more time And then you can hear it running in the back and then once you're ready to turn it off just hold ok down And then it turns off and then that will turn off automatically. To switch on the uh, propane, you've got to switch on at the bottles and the transom and the locker there. And then you come down here, you can see the valve is off. You want it on, you hit on, and the valve, and it comes on with a nice click. And now we can go to the stove. So lighting the stove, make sure before you twist the, the uh, knob on the burner that your lighter is in fact working. And these also come with a, an automatic lighter there as well. And that seems to be working fine. Now over here you can see that, that is your left burner. So you press it in and twist it. And then you can hit that and it works perfectly. And you hold it for three seconds, then you can let it go. And that's the same with the next one. Where you can see that that is the smaller one at the back. Press it in, twist it to the left and hit that and away it goes. Hold it down for three seconds, then you can let it go. And of course you can regulate the amount of flame. And this one here is for the right hand burner. Just twist it, same again. And all of those are working well. Now for the oven itself, you can see down there the designation for the oven. Open the door, just pull it open. You switch this on. To the light position lighting position and you can press that as well and you can hear that come on and if you look through the hole there you can see the flame burning happily i'm holding it down for a few seconds and it has gone out so that means we must do that again if it does go out hold it down for a little longer because it means the thermocouple has not engaged there we are now it has engaged and i can let it go and switch that off up there and swing it in. Now it does have a gimbal lock which is down here and to engage that gimbal lock you just pull it up and it's got to go in that hole. There we are. That's it. That locks it in there and then the stove stays permanently locked. If you want to sail it, you want to cook it, see that's what you would do. Right, the refrigerator. Down there, that's the freezer section of the refrigerator. And up here is the fridge. And if you look inside here, you find the thermostat right there. Okay, it's inside and it's on the right hand side of the ice box area. Now to knock this down, open up the spring like that and you'll have no problem in dropping it in place.
Okay, right, we have the conventional Japsco head. You'll notice this black lever is across to the right here, and that's the dry bowl position, and it should always be in that position. To pump, you switch it across to the left, unlock it, and then pump. It. And the more pumps that you give it, the cleaner the toilet will remain. So you pump that up and down, and you'll see it's bringing water in and flushing at the same time. This is referred to as the wet bowl position, and that's where you do all your pumping. The more you pump, the cleaner the toilet. When you finish, go back onto the dry bowl and pump, and you'll see that no more water comes in. And what actually happens here is it empties. But when you finish, you can twist it and it'll lock. That's a lock position. Press down and twist and it will lock. Now while we're here, I'll show you where the the um, holding the, the holding tank drain is. This is its valve right here. That's shut, that's open. And with that, uh, that open, anything going into the tank will automatically drain out over the side. It's a gravity drain system. We always leave it shut when we're in marinas and we'll have it open when we are sailing. Right, and this is where you'll find your toolbox and we also have an emergency blanket in there. So that's if you need any tools and that just sticks on there with Velcro buttons. And the port salon um, cushion You'll see this is where our house batteries are, or service batteries, and this is the switch to isolate them. I can't imagine that you'd ever want to do that, but if you want, wanted to isolate the domestic batteries, that's where you'd find it. You just twist that toggle. Drop this back into place. Right, some first. Safety first, here are some wooden bones, and they live up on top, together with your first aid kit, which we'll put in there as well, and your flares, so everything's really quite handy there. And just slot that in, that's good, together with the flashlight. And then if you look forward here, underneath this double bunt forward are the life jackets. So you just have to lift this up, and hey presto, there are the life jackets. So we'll just return this to its rightful home. And then we can drop, drop that down. And in each of the hanging lockers, there are life jackets as well. And there is a fire extinguisher in here, in the bottom of this locker. There you can see it at the back. And in each of the aft cabins, there are fire extinguishers as well, so three fire extinguishers on board. Right, we're inside the chart table here. We've got a spare Abus lock and a couple of batteries, some pens, and three winch handles. And this is an important little tool. It's there for picking up the floorboard. So you just press that down, six on it, and up they come. So you press on it, press down, and there you have it. Hey, presto. That's all there is to get it to go flat, just knock it like that while you're still holding it and let it down. Thank you so much for watching our short video presentation. I do hope that this helps you on your trip. We sincerely hope that you have a great trip. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the operation, you've also got the manual that you can refer to and you can call me. 1-250-729-5592. Have a great holiday, and thank you for sailing with the Nightmare Yacht Chances.